welcome to a very special Halloween edition of My Cupcake Addiction. You'll see I've gotten dressed for the occasion. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this amazing cauldron cake. This is a wow factor cake. I'm also going to show you how to make it bubble broil and steam using a bit of a dried ice effect. Of course it's up to you if you want to add in the dried ice or if you just want to make it as a straight cake. Today I've teamed up with the guys over at VAT19 and they've sent me some amazing gummy confectionery to really make our cake pop. Let's get started. Because we've got such a lot of tools and equipment for this video, rather than spending the first five minutes going through them all, I'm just going to list them in the description box below. A couple of things that I do want to point out, one of them are these awesome gummy skull pops. So these are a gummy skull on a lollipop stick and also the gigantic gummy python. Both of these are available from vat19.com. I will link to their YouTube channel and to their website down below in the description box if you want to pre-order those to make your cauldron cake. To begin with, split your vanilla cake batter into two bowls now and add a little bit of your darker green and then your next lightest green into each of those bowls and stir it all the way through. Doesn't really matter what kind of green food colouring you use here so long as you've got two different greens. I put a little bit of baking paper down on the base of my two round tins and then really, really well greased them and the bowl. And then you want to take three or four sort of blobs of one of the greens, pop it into each of your containers and then the other. So basically what you're doing is you're putting a combination of those two different colours which is going to give us a bit of a vague marbled effect. Once you've got all of your mix in, pat it down using a big spoon or a spatula and then run a skewer all the way around kind of in little figure eights and that's going to give you that marbled effect. Before they go in the oven, stick another circle of baking paper on top, that's going to help your cakes rise evenly and they're going to take between 40 minutes and an hour. While they're in the oven, you want to combine your chocolate and your cream and we're going to put that into the microwave for two minutes on high. Mine only took two minutes, but I've got a really good microwave, so you might need to put it in for a couple more intervals, a minute at a time, stirring really well in between. It doesn't matter if you use a liquid food colour or a paste here, but I love the Americolor Electric Green to get this really slimy, sludgy colour. And the consistency that you're looking for is going to be different for each of your batches of ganache, so make sure you pay attention to the ingredient measurements that I've put down below. Once your cakes are cooked and completely cooled, you want to take your serrated edge knife and trim away the top, and then you want to trim any edgings off. So all those crispy brown edges, you just want to take them off and then flip your cake and trim away the bottom. This is going to leave you just with that nice green sponge underneath. Cut your cakes in half and leave your bowl cake completely as it is. So don't trim anything away from your bowl cake because you want it to retain that lovely bowl shape. We're going to stack our cake upside down. So I've got my eight inch cardboard board on a temporary cake board, which is my board that I'm going to let get messy. Smear down a bit of that ganache and then tip your cake upside down and put the first layer face down onto that cardboard cake board. Taking your circle cutter, core out a central circle and then using some of those test tubes or a smaller circle cutter, you just want to core out four little circles before applying a nice even coat of ganache on top. Your ganache should have thickened by now but it won't be completely set. Cut a couple of your straws in half and then just poke them in so that you can remember where you've put those little test tube holes before sticking on your next layer of cake and you're repeating that process with each layer. So coring out the centre circle and you should have a rough estimation of where those test tube holes are going to go. You only need to make these test tube holes and use the test tubes if you're planning on using the dried ice bubbling smoking effect. If you're not, ignore this step completely. I'll still get you to core out the centre circle because that's going to be the oozy slime inside our cauldron. The reason we're poking these test tube guide holes now is because the cake's going to have a lot of pressure resting on quite a small base here and we want to avoid putting any unnecessary pressure on the top of the cake once it's all stacked and turned. It's also the reason we want to add a centre board. So take your 7 inch cake board now and place it face down onto your ganached surface and then you want to take a little bit more of that ganache and just lightly spatula it over the top of the board so that you've got something for your bowl cake to stick to. If you need to, trim the top of your bowl cake so that it's completely flat and it sits flush with that cake board and then take your half straws that you cut in half and push them down into the cake. Rest another cake board on top just to make sure that you've got it even and trim those little straws off so that that board is as perfectly even as you can get it. And then we're going to spatula some ganache. Because I lost a little chunk of that bowl cake as I pulled it out of the bowl, I've actually made my straws just a touch taller. They're all perfectly even, but they're sort of in line with the highest point of the cake. Don't be too fussy with this first coat. It can be pretty messy. Just get a bunch of ganache on there. And as you're putting it on, make sure that you're sort of spatulaing it into any of the cracks and gaps between your cake layers. 
give it a rough smooth off so it's a basic cauldrony type shape and pop it off into the fridge for 20 minutes to set. I'm now using my secondary batch of ganache and that's been sitting at room temperature for about three hours to start firming but it's not yet set. Pay special attention to the quantities for this one as it needs to be quite firm. And you want to apply a generous amount, about a half an inch, all over the outside of the cake. Once it's applied, take a scraper, a ruler or the edge of your serrated knife and line it up with that bottom cake board before dragging it along the outside edge of your cake to get a really nice smooth edge. Then you can just use your spatula to neaten up that top section as best as you can but don't worry if you've got some little lines and ripples here because I'll show you how to smooth that out once it's set. Pop that one back into the fridge for 20 minutes, no longer than 20 minutes because you don't want the cake beneath to get cold. Once it's set, it should be really nice and firm, this layer. So I've just got a mug here with some boiling water in it and I'm dipping in my spatula to heat up the spatula and I'm just gonna use the heat from the spatula to take off any of those little ridges and really smooth it down. If you get any water on your board here, make sure you clean this up just using a clean dry tissue so that you don't get any water anywhere near your fondant. For your fondant, you're going to need to roll out quite a large piece. So sprinkle down a generous amount of corn flour and I'm using a big rolling pin here and rolling out a nice large piece of fondant. Keep that fondant moving on your bench so that it doesn't stick. And then take some plain water or you can use some sugar syrup here and that pastry brush and just apply a generous coating of water to the outside of your cake. Once again, making sure it's not on the cake board. And then lift up your sheet of fondant and place it over the top before smoothing it. You want to secure the top first and get any air out of the top and then gradually pull out the edges while smoothing down with your hands. So you can see here I'm sort of pulling it out so that I don't get wrinkles and then I'm smoothing down all the way to the top or the bottom of your cake. Take your pizza cutter now and come right in close to the edge of your cauldron cake and just trim all the way around and then use a tissue to make sure that you've got any excess water off the board and also to push that lip in so it's nice and flush with the cake. If you have the time here, I recommend leaving the cake for about six hours to let that fondant start to dry out. It just improves your structure a little bit and makes it easier to turn. To turn your cake, you want to apply a nice amount of that chocolate ganache onto the base of your cauldron and then take your presentation board, flip it so that your good side is facing the cauldron and stick it in the middle. You want one hand under the center of your temp board and one under the center of your presentation board and then just flip. If you're not so strong in the arms here, get someone who is to help because that cake is really heavy. You need to remove that first cake board we stuck down. So just slide your offset spatula underneath or a knife and you might just need to slide it around just to disengage the suction of that ganache before peeling it off. Tidy up any little wayward bits of ganache or cake. And then I used my python here. So the giant gummy python is actually the perfect accompaniment to this cake. Not only does he look creepy and spooky and awesome, but he's really firm and his body is the perfect thickness to provide us with a little bit of extra support. He is optional and that cake will hold without him, but I think he looks amazing and it's always good to have that knowledge that your cake's got more stability than it needs. With no corn flour down, you wanna roll out a long, fat strip of fondant. This is gonna be the lip or the rim of our cauldron, so make it as even as you can and just slice off either end. Before sticking that down, I just took a very little bit of water and a paintbrush and just gently painted around that skinny top rim of fondant and then laid my sausage of black fondant directly on top. So really this is going to be sticking to that outer edge of fondant, which is another reason why it's great if you can let that fondant start to set a little bit before flipping your cake. Trim off any excess with a knife and then match your two ends up and spend a bit of time getting that as smooth and as even as possible so that it makes your cauldron look as neat and as realistic as you can. To make my two handles, I just rolled out two thinner sausages of fondant and using my fingers, I just made kind of like a little handle sort of an impression in the middle and then flattened either edge into a bit of a tapered flat shape before applying a little bit of water and sticking it onto either side of my cauldron. If you're going for the bubbling effect, now's the time to insert your test tubes. So just pop them in and you'll notice that they are poking up a little way above that cake. That's gonna avoid cross-contamination between your dried ice and your cake. Pour your last batch of ganache over. It should fill that center well and not go inside your test tubes. And you wanna make sure that you're completely flooding the whole top of your cauldron. We wanna add a bit of a bubbly effect here. So I've gone with some Aero chocolate mint round chocolate balls. You could use Whoppers, Maltesers, whatever you like. And then you want to spoon some more of that ganache over top of those balls. You'll need two coats covering the balls so that you can't see their initial color through. Now I'm taking my gummy skeleton pops from VAT19 and I actually don't want them to be the colored gummy, I want them to be white. So I'm spooning some nice thinned out melted white chocolate 
all the way over. I'm spooning rather than dipping because it allows me to get the chocolate into all of those little cavities of the eyes and the nose. And I've thinned that melted white chocolate out using a little bit of Crisco or a little bit of shortening. So it's really, really nice and fluid. One of the red ones, I actually left some of the red exposed, so it looks like there's some gruesome bloody skull poking out of the bone. So gross. To position your skulls, simply slide in the whole lollipop stick. That's gonna hold them in place and make sure that you're sliding it nicely around those test tubes. I used three in total. The final steps to your gruesome cauldron is just gonna be adding in some of those other nasties. So I've got like some little gummy worms, I've got some frogs, and I found these really cool kind of disgusting chicken feet candies. A couple of little candy bones completes the look and I am pretty happy with my gruesome cauldron stew. All right, so just before you want to serve your cake, because that dry ice isn't gonna last long, but it's a spectacular, spectacular feature when you bring that cake out to the table or just before your guests are about to start eating it. So I'm just spooning in some of those dried ice pellets into our little test tubes. All right, so once all of your dried ice is in your test tubes, you're just gonna put in some water. Check out that potion effect. So there's your finished cauldron effect. Look at it bubbling and broiling and steaming and smoking. It's a truly spectacular cake for Halloween. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. I hope that you'll have a great Halloween and as always, thanks very much for watching.